I often feel pressured to find new investment opportunities that I could present to you here on YouTube. But the reality is that during most times, the best approach is to simply stick to what you already own and add more capital to these companies. I've worked really hard to cherry pick all the REITs that I currently hold in my portfolio. And so to justify a new investment, that REIT would need to be even more attractive than what I currently own, or it would need to be unique enough to add more diversity to the portfolio to mitigate its risks. But that's just not easy to find. I could of course present to you some new and exciting REIT, but what's the point if the prospects of that REIT are actually inferior to some other companies that we've already covered on this channel? So I'll take the boring route here and cover two REITs that we've previously already discussed on this channel, but I'll try to cover them from a slightly different perspective to keep it entertaining for you. Hey everyone, this is Yussi, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about two of my favorite REITs to buy in February 2024. Before I get into it, you already know what I'm going to ask you. Could you please click the like button? That really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. So the first read that we're going to discuss here is called NNN read. The CQ symbol is NNN. This is one of the leading net lease reads. It's one of the biggest. It has a 30 plus year track record, an even longer track record than Realty Income, which is the most popular read in this specific sector. In case you're not familiar with net lease properties, these are typically single tenant service oriented properties such as Walgreens pharmacies, Dollar General convenience stores or 7-Eleven or Chevron gas stations. What's uniquely attractive about these properties is that the lease term is typically structured in a way to be highly favorable to the landlord. The lease term is typically very long at over 10 years. They include automatic annual rent escalations of 1 to 2%, which may not seem like much, but really adds up over time because these rent escalations happen each year. And importantly, typically these are triple net leases, which means that the tenant is responsible for all property expenses, including even the maintenance. And so this is a net return that you're getting. You don't get diluted into property expenses and maintenance. And so once again, this 1% to 2% annual rent escalation really adds up over time because this really falls straight to your bottom line. And NNN REIT is uniquely attractive in this space. Our analyst Arpol Drake has previously described it as almost perfect in a previous report and that's because of all the following reasons. Firstly, it has an investment grade rated triple B plus credit trading. It has substantially no secured debt. It has negligible debt maturities in the coming years. It has a 13.7 year average debt maturities, which is one of the longest in the entire REIT sector. So there's no major impact here from rising interest rates. It has a 10 year average remaining lease term. So even if you go into a recession tomorrow, there won't be any major impact for, for this specific REIT. It has ample liquidity to keep buying additional properties. It has a 33 year track record of dividend growth. So again, this is a higher track record even than Realty Income, also known as the monthly dividend company, O Stock, which is so popular because of its dividend track record. Again, this street has an even longer track record of growing the dividend. It's focusing on middle markets. Mostly these are tenants that cannot access the bond market. And so this gives NNN REIT additional advantages in being able to negotiate even stronger lease terms with of these specific tenants. And then finally, it also has outstanding diversification, whether that's from the perspective of what the tenant is doing, the tenant itself, or even the geography of the property. So those were all the attributes that our analyst Paul Drake had used to describe NNN REIT as almost perfect. But there are many other attributes that I want to still highlight here. Firstly, the investment strategy of this REIT is highly defensive because it's typically targeting properties that have rents that are below market levels, providing some margin of safety in case there are some troubles with the tenant down the line. Moreover, it's also buying these properties typically at a large discount to their replacement cost and typically it's targeting properties with a large land value component. So in a worst case scenario, if the tenant vacates the property and you're not even able to release the property, which is pretty rare, this is really a worst case scenario in that case you can still just tear down the property you still own the land which is highly valuable you can build something new on top of it since the rent was deeply below market perhaps and once you build something new you can bump up rents once again so this is very defensive approach to net lease investing then the second thing that I want to highlight is that they have high exposure to high growth states like Texas and Florida which make up nearly one third of the portfolio 
Then thirdly, they focus mainly on defensive concepts like convenience stores, automotive parts, uh, fast food restaurants. Today, their biggest tenant is 7-Eleven. Then fourth, their leases are among the best in the NetLease peer group because these are absolute true triple net leases. In some cases, some other NetLease REITs really have, we call them triple net leases, but in reality, they will own a mixture of triple net leases and double net leases. The difference here is that in triple net leases, all the maintenance is covered by the tenant, but in double net leases, typically you'll have the landlord still share some responsibility. This might be for the parking lot or the structure of the building or perhaps the roof. So from this perspective, NNN rate is superior than most of its peers. Then fifth, this is a read that's highly focused on growing on a per share basis. They are very well aligned with shareholders. I mean, this is very clear, very evident from their track record as well. And the attractive thing here is that I think that they can achieve a roughly 5% annual FFO per share growth rates, mostly internally without having to raise much capital in the public equity market. Uh, so they can achieve this via the rent increases and by retaining about 30% of their cash flow to acquire additional properties so their growth prospects is very much independent from the mood of Mr. Market. And so despite all these very attractive attributes, NNN rate is today priced at just around 13 times FFO, which is actually a discount relative to the average of the REIT sector. Today, the average REIT is priced around 15 times FFO. Large cap REITs like NNN REITs are priced even higher than that, at closer to 16, 17 times. So you're getting an above average quality REIT at a below average valuation, which is quite attractive in my opinion. The dividend yield today is about 5.5% and that's despite having a low 69% payout ratio. And as we mentioned earlier, we think that in a typical year, the REIT should be able to grow at about 5%, perhaps a bit less than that if we remain in a higher interest rate environment. But let's say it's even just 3 to 4%. That gets you to near 10% average annual total returns simply from the yield and the growth. And that's very attractive in my opinion, considering that this is a fairly defensive REIT. And now it gets even better because interest rates are expected to go lower in 2024. I think that this is going to be a strong catalyst for REITs like NNN REIT because they have a very long duration in their leases that makes them more sensitive to interest rates. And so today they are priced at 13 times FFO, but if now its valuation multiple returns to its historic norm of 16 to 20 times FFO, that could lead to significant upside potential. Simply returning to 16 times FFO, which is the low end of this range, would unlock about 20% upside. If you now think that this is going to happen over a two year time period, that would add another roughly 10% per year. So if you're getting 10% return from the yield and the growth and another 10% from pricing from FFO multiple expansion, that will get you roughly 20% average annual total returns over the next two years. And coming from one of the most defensive rates that exist, this is a great risk to reward, in my opinion. And now the second read that I'm buying is called EPR Properties, ticker symbol EPR. This is also a net lease read, but it's quite a bit riskier than NNN read because it's focusing on experiential properties such as movie theaters, golf complexes, ski resorts. They also own some amusement parks, some hot springs and all sorts of other experiential properties. I think that now is a good time to buy more shares of this street because it's still very heavily discounted despite having very well recovered from the pandemic and also having benefited from many positive news in the recent month. Firstly, the regal bankruptcy has now been resolved. This was something that weighted very negatively on its stock, but the outcome of this bankruptcy was actually very positive. Most of these properties will still be operated by the same tenant, which is now a lot stronger post-bankruptcy because it was able to cut down a lot of its debt through its restructuring. And the rent on most of these properties was actually increased and they will now be under one master lease, which offers much better protection to EPR in case of a future bankruptcy. And then a minority of the assets were vacated by Regal. Other companies will operate these properties. And then another portion of assets will be simply sold by EPR. The net outcome of all of this is that EPR didn't lose much at all in terms of its rents. And yet now it has a much stronger tenant and better diversification. 
This is also great news in my opinion because it gives a framework to the market of what to expect in case of another tenant bankruptcy in the movie theater sector. So if let's say AMC goes bankrupt today, we've seen already this play out with Regal. EPR didn't lose much at all. And in the case of AMC, I would argue that EPR will probably have even less to lose because it already renegotiated its lease with AMC during the pandemic in a way that should mitigate risks going forward. So this is all great news. But then on top of that, the box office of movie theaters has kept recovering nicely following the major successes of Barbie and Oppenheimer and some other big blockbuster movies. AMC managed to turn its first quarterly profit since 2019. It also raised a bunch more equity capital, which mitigates risks going forward. As a result of all of this, the rent coverage ratio of EPR's movie theaters has recovered to more or less the same level as before the pandemic, and yet the market is still pricing it at a substantial discount as if it was facing significant risks. Therefore, I think that EPR is one of the REITs that today offers the best combination of value, growth, income and upside. Value because it's priced at just around 9 times FFO. Income because it's offering a 7.5% dividend yield. Growth because last year in 2023 it guided to grow its FFO share by 9%. I think in a typical year, on a normalized basis, they will match to grow at about 5%, which is very attractive for such a high yielder. And then upside because it has significant upside potential here. I mean, if it's priced at nine times FFO before the pandemic, it tr typically traded at closer to 15, 16 times FFO. If you now see it recover even just to 13 times, 14 times, that's about 50% upside from here. I don't think that the multiple is going to recover there tomorrow or anytime soon, but as a read now gradually keeps diversifying its portfolio, it keeps proving the market wrong by collecting its rent checks, its tenants keep getting stronger as the box office continues its recovery, and then interest rates also return to lower levels. All of that should serve a strong catalyst for the stock in the coming years. I would also like to remind you here that EPR has one of the best track records of any REITs having managed to massively outperform the average of the REIT sector over the long run by following this unique approach to net lease investing and this is because there simply isn't much competition for these properties and this has allowed EPR to buy them with very attractive lease terms and high returns. The pandemic was obviously a major crisis for them. It led to a two-year hiccup in its growth, but now it's back on its feet. Its cash flow is back at its pre-pandemic levels and the outlook is very positive from here, in my opinion. So these were the reasons why I keep buying more shares of NNN REIT and EPR properties. Once again, these are REITs that we've covered previously on this channel, but I think it's a good reminder that good investing should be boring. Uh, you shouldn't be always looking for a new, exciting investment. Uh, most of the time, the best approach is to simply stick to what you already own, keep adding more capital to those companies, assuming that they are priced at attractive valuations. And I think that this is the case for these two specific REITs. Now, if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, you can join my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord, for a two-week free trial. It's available on Seeking Alpha. This is a real two-week free trial, so you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days. If you want to come just for this trial period to see my portfolio, access my research, and then cancel, it's perfectly fine with me. And then if you stick around following the, the two-week free trial, you also get a nice discount that we're offering for the new year. And then once more, if you think that this content is helpful, I really appreciate it if you could click the like button. That really helps me to grow this channel and get this content in front of more eyeballs. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.